Right, so this lecture is called Naming Haloalkanes, but in it we'll look at the preparation of haloalkanes, the naming of haloalkanes, and the classification of haloalkanes. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to name haloalkanes and identify them as either primary, secondary, or tertiary monohaloalkanes. So far in section 2.4, we've looked at the introduction and alkenes. In this series of lectures, we're now going to look at the haloalkanes. So let's first of all briefly look at how you make a haloalkane. And we came across this in the previous section on alkenes, and we saw that haloalkanes could be made by addition of halogens or hydrogen halides to an alkene. If we add a hydrogen halide, then we get a monohaloalkane. Whereas if it's a halogen we're adding, we'll get a dihaloalkane. So next thing I want to look at is how we name these haloalkanes. So if it's a fluorine atom that's on the haloalkane, we call it a fluoro group. Chlorine is chloro, bromine is bromo, and iodine is iodo. And the basic naming system really just follows all the basic rules you learnt in National 5 and higher for naming branched uh, alkanes, for example. In this case, the branch is the halogen. So here we see propane with a chlorine branch, as it were, on the first carbon. So that would be one chloropropane. Well, this one, for example, we've got a bromine on the second carbon. That'd be two bromopropane. If there's more than one different type of halogen, then we name them in alphabetical order. So it'll always be, say, where the bromines are, then the chlorines, then the fluorines, then the iodines. So, for example, this one is one bromo, two chlorobutane. I remember when you're writing these things, the hyphens are always used to separate letters from numbers, numbers from letters, otherwise it's just one big word. So the bromine's first here, not because it's on the first carbon, but because the B is before C in alphabetical order. So for example, this one, which the bromine and the chlorine are swapped around, you still say where the bromine is first, even though it's on the second carbon and the chlorine's on the first. So it's two bromo, one chlorobutane. If you've got, say, more than one bromine, then you'd say it was dibromo or tribromo or whatever. So for example, we've got two chlorines, so it's going to be dichlorobutane. And you've got to say where each chlorine is. So one on the first carbon, one on the second carbon. So it's one, two, dichlorobutane. Well, this one, and this time I've done it in skeletal formula. Again, it's butane, one, two, three, four. Of course, for numbering, we'll go from the other end, one, two, three, four. Two chlorines, both on the first carbon, so it's one, one, dichlorobutane. Now, the presence of prefixes does not change the alphabetical order. So, for example, here, We've got two bromines, so it's dibromo, and one chlorine. So the name of this is 1,2-dibromo, one 1-chloroethane. One so you ignore the fact that the D makes dibromo come after chloro in alphabetical order. Okay, so it's always the bromines, then chlorines, fluorines, iodines. Okay, here's some for you to tie name yourself. So if you pause the lecture, tie and name these three haloalkanes, then I'll put the answers up. Okay, the first one is 1,3-dibromo-3-fluorobutane. The second one here is 
123 trifluoropropane. And the final one is 1 bromo, 1 chlorobutane. Here's another three for you to try, this time done in skeletal formula. So again, pause the tape, then I'll run through the answers. Okay, this first one is 2-bromobutane. The second one, 2,3-dichlorobutane. And this last one is 2-chlorohexuanine. So that's how you name the you know, alkanes. Finally, I want to look at classifying the monohaloalkanes. Mono alkanes. And like alcohols, you can be classified as primary, secondary or tertiary. And as we'll see later on, just like the alcohols, it does have an effect on the reactions that they undergo. So it's important that you be able to identify a monohalo alkane as being primary, secondary or tertiary. Right. A primary halo alkane, right, just using X to represent a halogen, okay. the carbon to which a halogen is attached will be attached to only one carbon, so that's a primary monohalo alkane. In a secondary monohalo alkane, the carbon to which the halogen is attached will be attached to two other carbons. So that's secondary. And finally, if the carbon to which the halogen is attached is attached to three other carbons, then it's tertiary. So, this is one, two, three other carbons, tertiary, two other carbons, secondary, one other carbon, primary. And of course, if it's just a methane-based haloalkane and it's no carbons, then that also would be classified as primary. So, I'm going to put up four different haloalkanes and I want you to try and determine whether or not they're primary, secondary or tertiary and then I'll review the answers. So have a go at doing that. Okay this first one here it's a primary haloalkane. The carbon to which the halogen is attached is only attached to one carbon. This one here is tertiary because the carbon to which the bromine is attached. It's attached to one, two, three carbons. This one is secondary. Got the carbon is attached to one, two other carbons. And finally this one is primary because the carbon to which the bromine is attached is only attached to one other carbon. So it's important that you can name haloalkanes and be able to classify them as primary, secondary or tertiary haloalkanes. So by now you should be able to name haloalkanes and be able to identify monohaloalkanes as being either primary, secondary or tertiary monohaloalkanes.